All right, folks, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, we are joined right now for the uh, first time, I'm happy to say, by uh, Executive Editor of the Weekly Standard, Fred Barnes. Hello, Fred. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. Good to talk to you again. It's been a while. Well, thanks. And um, good good to, to have you here. And um, good, great column about uh, Barack Obama and his... Uh, his stubbornness, uh, titled in the Weekly Standard, Obama's right. stubbornness of mind is a terrible thing to change. Well, he doesn't. Uh, that's for sure. He just doesn't change his mind. I mean, it is a particular type of stubbornness, and it's an ideological uh, stubbornness. I mean, just think of the economy. He's proposing now uh, the same thing. He does it in almost every speech. The same thing he was talking about back in 2009. And we know we have the slowest economic recovery in memory. Uh, people dropping out of the economy by uh, the millions, uh, low, slow growth, uh, high joblessness, and yet he, he he's sticking to the same old stuff. Uh, he's stubborn in the sense of being more than just a slow learner. He's a non-learner, uh, and that's quite unique. Is he so entrenched in his in his in his uh, what some would consider, including me, I must admit, his hardcore political philosophies, mm -hmm. uh, that he's just purposely, you know, unwilling to to yield in in any way on those issues? I think so, and he's not even willing to consider seriously uh, doing anything, uh, for instance, on the economy than what he's been proposing all along. The fact that it doesn't work, that's not a consideration. He's he's sticking with. Uh, Gee, we have to spend more money on, on infrastructure, on roads and bridges, and research and education. And if we do those things, well, the economy will flourish. Well, he's been doing those things, and the economy has not flourished, and yet he's not reconsidering it. You know, and, and, I mean, it's not just uh, <clears throat> uh, politics here, uh, you know, because he's not, it's not politics at all. You would think somebody, for political purposes, would say, well, wait a minute, this isn't working, and I'm harming myself and my presidency. And, and my party, the, yeah. And my party and those who uh, are going to be running for election, in, say, in 2014, and yet uh, he, nothing happens, nothing changes. No, nothing changes. And, and you know, perhaps uh, one of the most uh, blatant examples of the stubbornness, which if we had a fair media, mm -hmm. uh, would have, I mean, I think his approval ratings at this point would be 15%. Mm -hmm. When he refused to negotiate, uh, budge on the uh, the, de the debt ceiling and the uh, the shutdown of the government, mm -hmm. where his predecessors had and 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 folks like Chris Wallace and you and others were pointing out what those deals were, and then the administration would sit there and say, "Oh no, that never happened. Your history was wrong," as as one administration official said to Chris Wallace, which was insane. I mean, here's a guy who was willing to take us over that so-called cliff over not extending, not not putting in a one-year delay in a in a medical device tax. He was, yeah. I mean, the the stubbornness was was. Oh, uh, overwhelming. You know, I'd even forgotten about the medical uh, device tax. That's what it was down thing. to, basically. Yeah. That's all they wanted. Yeah, basically it did. And uh, remember when uh, it came down to, on one of the budgets, it came down to, or, or it wasn't a budget, but whatever it was, it came down to uh, his support for Planned Parenthood. Yep. They yep. didn't do anything that uh, reduces funds or, or, or puts uh, restrictions on Planned Parenthood. Well, then, you know, we're not going to have a budget or whatever it was. I mean, it is... It is, and and that shows uh, both the medical device tax and the Planned Parenthood thing how ideological he is, and obviously ideologically very left, uh, and 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 the stubbornness on top of it. Yeah, we're talking to Fred Barnes. Uh, ex I'm sorry, executive editor of the Weekly Standard here on the Steve Malzberg Show. What were you going to say, Fred? I was just going to say this is unique. I've covered a lot of presidents, and if things don't work. Uh, they tend to go for something else. Yeah, and uh, I mean that's quite natural, and and it it doesn't need to be a radical departure, but it can be just maybe trying uh, a little bit of something else and see if that works. And, and, not with Obama. No, and you mentioned, and we'll get to foreign policy in a second, as you also okay. bring up Iran. Uh, but but just one more example, quick off the top of my head. I mean, when when the uh, National Institute of Health uh, wasn't being funded for kids with cancer, mm -hmm. and Harry Reid made that flippant remark, you know, I have people who are you know out of work in my, they've been laid off in my district, blah blah blah. I mean, Obama, uh, the House passed a bill that would have helped kids with cancer, mm -hmm. and Obama told Harry Reid, don't, and if you do, I won't sign it. I mean, I I can't imagine being more stubborn than that. But again, it it fell under the radar. Talk about, I mean, you bring up Iran in your piece as well. Uh, I mean, th this is insane what's going on. Now we, we, we learned they released a Iranian scientist earlier in the year while they were secretly talking, and we have three prisoners in there, and, and, and we just cut a deal and we got nothing. 
Uh, yeah, but the Iranians got a lot. Yeah. Uh, they've got their <laughs> economy back, not completely on track, but uh, certainly headed in that direction. And it will be almost impossible to undo what was given away in this so-called uh, interim deal, preliminary deal. Uh, you know, I mean, it would be almost impossible for the president if he decided he'd never do it. But if he decided that the Iranians were not complying with what they'd agreed to. And so we're going to reinstate all the sanctions that we removed uh, a few months ago. Then he would have to he'd have to get that through the Chinese and the right and, sure. the, and the Russians and the English and the French and and so you on. You can't snap and, your finger and reinstate them. No, no it, it doesn't work that way. And all the businesses, uh, not only American but European and so on, that have gone back and uh, and made deals with Iranian firms and banks and so on. It uh, it's not. Uh, you don't just say, okay, sanctions are on again. He can't do it unilaterally, and I don't think he would want to anyway, because if any, if uh, he threatened to do that, uh, the Iranians would say, well, we're dropping out of the peace talks, and, right. and then it would be reported that we're nearer to war. Yeah, no, uh, he, it's a very dangerous scenario yeah. he set up. Let, let me ask you this. How, how dangerous is all this unprecedented uh, stubbornness? Well, I think it is uh, uh, very dangerous, and particularly in the case of of the Iranians uh, that you just brought up. From the beginning of his presidency, uh, uh, Barack Obama has taken the stand that, look, America has been mean, been a bully, has been uh, unfair to the Iranians, and uh, look, I'll just be nice to them, and it's not just a, a country, Iran. It is the Islamic Republic of Iran. Remember that? He always called oh, it Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. If, they, if people are revolting against the uh, uh, dictatorship of the mullahs in Iran, well, I, I'm not going to side with them. I'm just going to be silent, and on and on and on. He has been he has stuck to this thing straight through, uh, and it is I would call it appeasement from day one. Yeah. Uh, and it scares you because when you're appeasing, it only encourages the uh, the person or the country that you're appeasing to get tougher and tougher and demand more and more. And others, Fred, others too. Listen, a, a pleasure talking to you, sir. I hope you have great holidays, and I hope you'll come back. Anytime. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Take care. Yep. That's Fred Barnes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ed executive editor of the Weekly Standard here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, you know, look, you, we could tell the, we, we tell these horror stories about Obama over and over again and paint these horrific, scary scenarios over and over again because they're real and we're living through them. And we have yet to see the result. Andy McCarthy's next Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV.